going to learn how to identify the topic. Uh, if you're going to write an essay, you need to know the topic you're going to write on. Or if you read something, how do I figure out the, the topic quickly? Okay. We're going to talk about how to identify and write a good thesis statement for a problem solution essay. Mm -hmm. Can somebody tell me where is the, where's the thesis statement located? The last uh, uh, sentence uh, in the first uh, paragraph. Good. Traditional. Mm -hmm. That's the case. Right. Um, we are going to identify patterns of organization. So if I were to ask you, how many parts are there to a traditional essay? Traditional? Three. Three. And what are they? Uh, the introduction. The introduction. Body. Body. Uh, and conclusion. And of course, you're getting into the details. Under each one of those categories, we'll talk about what needs to be in the introduction, for example. Mm -hmm. What needs to be in the body and what needs to be in a good conclusion. Okay? How many body in What's that? Say? How many body in this essay? Uh, this, this is probably going to be a, a five paragraph essay. It depends. So three, three body? Right, right. Three bodies. Right. Introduction, conclusion, and three body paragraphs. Okay? Okay. We'll talk more detail. Um, <clears throat> we're going to talk about how to analyze paraphrases. Does anybody know what a paraphrase is? Yeah. A paraphrase? Good. Correct. So if I if I write a sentence on the board, you take the sentence and you say it a different way. You restate it a different way using synonyms. Maybe you change the structure of the sentence. Maybe I put a simple sentence on the board and you use a compound sentence, for example. But it's just restating something another way. Okay. So we're going to talk about how to do that. Preview academic content to find the main ideas. So again, we're going to look at essays and we're going to talk about what are the main ideas in the essay. Um, we're going to collect information to make inferences. Do you guys know what an inference is? Inference. Yeah. Like. Uh, huh? Listen, this is important. Is anybody in here married? And you ladies are married. Two married ladies. Well, let me, let me just tell you guys something. No, she's in home. Oh, not, uh, you're home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So listen, all right, this is important, especially <laughs> for you guys. All right, listen. I understand. I don't know if it's the same in Turkey, but if you want to get married someday, mm -hmm. you need, it, part of being romantic mm -hmm. is not being too obvious, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is free. Okay. So you want to infer that you like the girl, without saying that you like the girl, right? Sure. So someone tell me, how can I infer that I like someone without saying I like you? Do you want to still? <laughs> no, this is really important. <laughs> no, it's okay. How, so how could I infer something in that, in that context? What would you do, Abdullah? What would I do? Yeah. But, but <laughs> by my, re my reactions and... Yeah, like, like what? What do you throw your hair back? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, by by my sense, like I don't know what to say. Like in some positions, like I should be acting in this way. Yeah. Like, right. So what? For example, I can say my heart belongs to or something. Now, is that inferring or is that implicit? This is a direct. <laughs> <laughs> My heart belongs to you, man. Okay, I like no, it's okay. So that's pretty direct. Let's go. Look, give me some more ideas. How can I infer? <laughs> Actually, I heard in some parts of like Eastern Europe, uh -huh. there's a custom on a certain day. The men hit the girl with a stick in the legs. Why? And the girl they like. I think it. So. Come on, guys. Listen, there's a word. It's called flirting. What is it? Flirting. I don't know. Okay? It's... Let me help you out. A little American culture here. Flirting. So, um, so listen. If you're in the same room and you like someone, okay. do you sit on the opposite side of the room or do you try to sit next to them? Sure, next to them. You sit next to them. So... Now that's really indirect, right? Mm -hmm. That's really indirect. Yeah. Uh, if if you like someone, do you do you just sit silently? No. no. 
or do you look at them? Look at them. You look at them and you talk to them, right? Yeah. Uh, if you like someone, uh, the tone of your voice is it? Mm -hmm. Told them they're, they're stupid, and I'm a student. Okay. Okay. And then the next day, I fail the test. Okay. That's ironic. It's ironic that I mocked you for being stupid, mm -hmm. and then I myself the next day failed the test. Okay. I'm the real idiot. Got it. Right? Uh -huh. So it's ironic that, that if you, if something happened to me, the very thing that I made fun of you. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, sure. Okay. So this is used a lot in fiction, irony, and then symbols. Do you know what symbols are? Forgot. Can you give me an example of a symbol? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Symbol, maybe. C circle, it's a copyright or something. There you go. Yep. So on a picture, if you see the little C with a circle around it, it's a symbol for copyright. It's okay. copyrighted. Okay. okay. So it's a picture representing something else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, identify attitude toward writing. So when we read something, can you tell if the author is angry, sad? trying to be romantic. Sometimes, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. yeah and that's a skill. It takes, it takes a certain amount of skill to understand that when you read something. Mm -hmm. um, recognize organization of an essay. This is for writing, of course. You guys already know, you told me. Mm -hmm. Organize and write a problem solution essay. Uh, you need to be able to edit your own work, mm -hmm. okay? Um, you, be, you need to be able to summarize uh, paragraphs and essays. Mm -hmm. It's really one of the most important skills that you can learn, it, especially if you're going on to university. Um, you need to be able to read something from like a scholarly work, take it and summarize it, and then use it to make your argument, right, in your paper. So you can take something else, uh, someone important wrote, summarize it, and then in the right place in your paper, it can be used. But you've got to be careful. When you use an outside source, it doesn't matter what it is, you have to do what? Correct. You have to cite it or reference it in your paper. Okay? And that's true of quotes. If I take an exact quote, I have to reference it. If I paraphrase it, I restate maybe a sentence or a paragraph. A paraphrase is much closer to a quote. Okay? Mm -hmm. I want to keep the approximately the same length. Let's say it's a sentence. Well, I want a sentence. Paraphrase. If it's a paragraph, I'm paraphrasing. You don't usually paraphrase a paragraph. It's usually a sentence. Mm -hmm. Maybe two at the most. Okay? A summary is the main ideas of a longer paragraph or an article or essay. Okay? All three. A quote, a paraphrase, and a summary. They all have to be cited when you use it in your paper. Mm -hmm. Okay? You with me? Sure. Um, Consolidate information from reading. So we'll read something. Today we're going to read something. Can what does con consolidate? What is consolidate? Anybody know? What does consolidate mean? Get results or conclusions or main ideas. Maybe. Yeah, okay. that's right. It means to condense. Okay. Okay, so in a short way, tell me what you just read. Mm -hmm. um, the main ideas. It's kind of like a summary. Mm -hmm. um, vocabulary. We're going to talk about different themes and words we would use with meditation, idiomatic expressions. By the way, idi idioms are fantastic. If you guys use, an idi you know what an idiom is, right? Yeah. If you use an idiom and you're talking to an American, you know what it does to our heart? Wow. It makes us. It makes. It makes us. We're impressed, and we think, wow, man, they're from a different country and they're using this idiom that you would only know. If you, if you studied it and you knew the right situation to use it. Even when you say it, or the Nautilus. Yeah, it's yeah. fun, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah if I go to your country and I use an idiom, mm -hmm. you go, know, oh, that's cool. So they're really, they're really great to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and your teachers love them when you put them in your paper in the right place. Mm -hmm. uh, the word skills that you, you will learn. We'll talk about some confused uh, words that are easily confused. Mm -hmm. For example, affect, effect, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of words that are almost the same but used differently in English. We'll look at some of those. The parts of speech. Quiz. How many parts of speech are there? Four. Three. Uh, 
Eight. Eight. <coughs> oh, eight. oh, okay. Uh, word forms. So listen, we have little, in English, we have a stem, which is the main word, and then we have prefixes and suffixes, mm -hmm. which are called together affective. Affective? Affective. Affective. Um, it's hard to say. It equals... Affixes? Yeah. There are endings and beginnings that we attach to stems, or the main word. Okay? So what, what's a prefix? Is that on the beginning or end? Uh, beginning. Beginning. Good. And then a suffix? Yeah. So, hey listen, this is a great strategy for learning, being able to figure out what words mean. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you know the meaning of a prefix or a suffix, then it's easier to figure out what a new word means. Does that make just, sense? Just have a question. What does NES mean? N-E-S-S. N-E-S-S? -S? -S? Yeah. It's, it's often tagged onto a word to make it an adjective. Like, okay. uh, or I'm sorry. Uh, no. A noun, I'm sorry. Yeah, I meant to say a noun. So you could say conscious. Happiness. Happiness. Sadness. Happy, happiness. Sadness. Sad, sadness. Yeah. Okay? Uh, Alright, now let's talk about the points real quick. Hey, listen, there's again there's two classes. Both classes have a participation grade which includes attendance and homework and being active in class. Okay? Mm -hmm. And in both classes it's worth 25 points. Mm -hmm. Listen, it says right here if ooh, hold on. RW is a two-hour class. It's like your SSP. If you miss more than six hours of class, you lose 25% of your grade. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. That's crazy. It's happened, but don't do it. Um, uh, be here. Be present. Um, all right. So that's all in that category. Reading quizzes. We're going to have at least two reading quizzes. Okay. I'm going to give you a story to read, and then there'll be some comprehension questions that you'll have to answer. And I always do a short, uh, short writing at the end of a reading quiz as well. Okay, so we'll talk about when those will be. Extensive reading. Listen, we have a book right here for extensive reading. Everybody's going to get one of these. Uh, we're going to be reading Pride and Prejudice. Okay, it's a classic story. Um, it's heavy. It's thick. Yeah, watch the movie. That might help you, but you do need to read the book. Is it an old movie? It is a movie. An old movie? It is an old movie. They're, they make newer versions of it, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. 2005. Yeah. Oh, okay. That old. Not, um, not too old. Yeah, so watch the movies, read the book. Um, there will be a short quiz over the book on M-Reader. It's an online quiz. You have to get a 60% or better. It's a pass-fail. Okay? Uh, we'll talk more about that. There's also an extensive reading project. And... Right now, Brian and I, he's teaching the other 107 class. Uh -huh. We're trying to think of a creative, fun thing we could do with the two classes okay. uh, for a project. I don't know what it's going to be yet. Okay. Hmm? Okay. We'll see. I don't know yet. We're going to talk. Um, and then, listen, the reading final is 15 points. Okay? If you go down to the writing section, uh, we're going to do short writings after each quiz, uh, reading quiz. So I'll grade those. Also, we're going to do a little a writing today that will be included in that grade. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, essay one, problem solution essay. It's going to be worth fifteen. Uh, hold on. It's worth twenty points. The first essay. Uh, again, I use the rubric in the back of our books. You have a rubric that I use to grade your papers. On which page? And it gives you all of the advanced rubrics. There's a 109 rubric, which is useful because you can see the tags um, on the last page there. But you want to go to 107, okay? And hey, I use this on both essays, and it's it's to help me be fair and consistent with you on how I grade. Yeah. And it also helps you know exactly what you're struggling with. Okay? Now listen, I'm going to tell you something. I don't even look at the name when I grade it. I read it, I mark it, I grade it, 
and I give, you, I give the person a grade, and then maybe I look to see who wrote it. So I don't want you to think, I, I, don't, I don't play favorites, I just grade the paper, okay? Um, that's just the way it works. And just so you know how this works, if you were to get, you notice up at the top here it says above average, standard, below standard, unsatisfactory. If you were to get 100, you, that means in all the categories, here's the categories, grammar and accuracy, vocabulary and spelling, length and format, introduction and thesis statement, organization development, and conclusion. I'm, those are the things I'm looking at closely and I'm grading you on, okay? It would be a good idea for you to read the boxes. We're not going to do it right now, but read what it looks like to get 100, okay? Because mm -hmm. that's all I do. I grade, I grade a lot of essays. Um, so I look at the boxes and I say, okay, is this true of the, of the person's writing? Mm -hmm. And then I circle the one that, mm -hmm. the, the points that you deserve, okay? It's a computer. This is a problem solution essay. So I'm going to give you a problem mm -hmm. and you're going to solve it. Okay? <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So back to this real quick. Essay 2 is worth 25 points. Now listen, I think we have some new people. Are you girls new here? Okay, so let's kind of slow down a little bit here. Um, the way that the essays work is the second essay is going to be the one that's worth more points. Okay? I'm not even going to tell you what it used to be like. I'm just going to tell you how it is. Okay? On the second essay, we call that the pass-fail essay. And this is not a graduation level. 369 and master's levels, okay? 112 is a graduation level. You have to meet the tags, which are target achievement goals. You can see the tags in the back of the book. Yeah, when you get to nine, you'll have to pass the tags. If you go to page, go to page 119. These are 109 tags, okay? You have to write about the topic the teacher gives you, okay? Or you, or you fail. Tag two, subjects and verbs. If you're missing a subject or a verb, that's a tag, okay? In a regular sentence. Verb tense. You need to be able to use the verb tenses. You've had all the verb tenses now. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to use the verb tenses correctly in your writing. So if you're talking about something in the past and you're using present tense, that's a tag. Don't we have the grammar in 107? The, the, you mean the verb tense? Uh-huh. You, you continue to learn verb tense. Uh, okay. But 106, I think you hit most of the verb tenses. Anyway. 90% of them. Yeah, 90%. Have you guys all had the perfect tenses? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you did. Okay. So you should know the, the verb tenses. Um, word order. Okay, that's putting words in the right order in a sentence. Mm -hmm. And primarily, what does that mean? You use a di there's well, it's talking about uh, it's talking about questions. Word order. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's let's do let's see. I guess I could just ask any question. Okay. Uh, so where's the subject? Subject? Yeah. Uh, Your. Yeah. And the verb. So it's in a question it gets switched. It's weird, but you have to do it. Okay? Uh, and there's some weird exceptions, but in general this is a question word order. Can somebody answer the question? What is your name? My name is... My name is... Yes. <laughs> Where's the subject? Is that my, you, you? My, you? Sorry. No. Where's the subject? My name. And the verb? Uh, it's, it's, oh. See that? Yep. Okay, so, and then there's a negative. 
So all right. So the thing with the negative is you have to you have to use this uh, helping verb, okay? The little do. And then you gotta have the negative, and then you have the main verb. Okay? Mm -hmm. A lot of people forget where to put the negative, and they stick it in the wrong spot. So if any of those problems are considered sentence pattern problems or word order problems. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And hey, listen, I'm gonna circle when I grade your essays, I'm gonna always on the first first attempt. Just for practice, I'm going to circle the tags, okay, so that you can see any tag mistakes you're making and correct those. Mm -hmm. um, tag five, capitalization and punctuation. This one right here kills a lot of students. Punctuation. Yeah, there's a lot of different rules for punctuation, uh, but you should know basic punctuation rules. All right, that includes how to use commas. We can talk about that, and we will talk about that. Also, spelling. Hey, listen, mm -hmm. we don't expect you to be able to spell every word in the English language. What well, we do expect for you to spell words. these 500. Okay? There's 500 words on this piece of paper I gave you. If you misspell one of these words, it's a tag. Mm -hmm. Okay? And on six, nine, 3, 6, 9, or 12, if you misspell these, more than 3, then you fail. You have to take the whole level over again. What's that? Yes. Uh, I'll let you use it on essay one, but essay two I won't. Okay? Because you should know those words. Um, all right. Let me explain, and then listen. On the reading and writing final, it's a little bit different. It's not a full essay. You're going to write one paragraph, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's the, the final reading and writing is going to be similar to the other quizzes I give, mm -hmm. okay? So it's not going to surprise you if you can do the reading and you do okay on the reading quizzes I give you now, you'll do fine on the final because I'm not going to do anything crazy. It's just going to be another, I, I get them from one place and I'm just going to give you one more in your range of reading will be similar. If you can read in English and reason in English, you should be able to answer the questions. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if you can write, uh, then you can write a paragraph uh, and you'll get great, your final grade on writing and reading will be based on that. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? Are there any questions about the OEC? No? Okay. Hey, listen, as we come up to each thing, I'll, we'll explain it in more detail. Uh, okay. Hey, let's take a look at this. Did everybody get one of these? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, this is just an overview of all the big assignments. Nobody should show up to class and say, I, I didn't know. Yeah, you did know. Because I just told you. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, so, let's take a look. Today, uh, you can see what we're doing. All right. So we're going to write essay one next week on Monday. We will have a reading quiz one and short writing one on Tuesdays in general. Mm -hmm. Okay? Those will start next week. Uh, we will rewrite essay one on Wednesday. So you're going to rewrite it. In the class? Yeah. Uh -huh. Has to be in class. Just, hey, for the new girls that don't know this, when you write an essay, you write it in class, okay? You'll have uh, 70 minutes to write the essay. I will give you a topic, or probably two topics. You pick one and write a problem-solution essay, okay? Introduction, body paragraph, conclusion. I will then take it and grade it. And I, now listen, normally, if you don't pass the tags, you have a zero at that point. I hand it back to you. Now, you don't do tags, so I'm just going to grade it. You'll get the, the grade. You'll, you'll know. I'll grade the first uh, draft. You'll get a grade, and you'll get it back. 
and you can re you'll fix all your mistakes and rewrite it. And if you do a really good job and fix your mistakes, I can give you an extra five points added to your score. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So just uh, one, to, uh, relax one time. Yeah, we're just gonna do. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I I know in other I know in like exit levels like 106. Yeah. There was an extra. He did three, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it's because of the tags. They had you fix the tags first, right? Then. And then you wrote it. Then you rewrote. And then you could rewrite it. At, yeah, we're not going to do three. Uh, we're going to do two. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So essay two, week three on Monday. Again, one reading quiz, short writing. On Tuesday, week three, we'll rewrite essay two. Um, now listen, I am not going to tell you the score on SA2. What? Because, why? Because it's stunt for the final. Yeah, I'm not allowed to reveal it just because it, it's such a huge essay. Let me ask Nathan, because this is a non-exit level. Because you could still potentially pass even if you fail it. So it may not matter. Let me check with Nathan, the academic director. Uh, I actually, in this level, I might actually be able to just tell you the grade on the, on the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but I probably wouldn't tell you the one on the last, the, the writing final. Yeah, I'm sure. sure. Yeah, so extensive reading quiz. That's this book right here that I'm going to give you in a minute. Mm -hmm. You need to take the quiz. Uh, by Thursday of week three. Yes. Now here's the deal. I don't care if you take it early. As long as you take it in LTC, you can go ahead and take it whenever you want. Mm. You get one shot at it. Okay? Um, I will give you a special class code that you will enter. You'll create, instruct, I'll tell you how to create an account, and then I'll give you a code for our class. You can take it early. You cannot take it late. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you don't take it on time, you'll get a zero. Can I take it many times? No. You get to take it once. Now, here's what I'll tell you. If I take it two, you'll... You can. I'll give you, you a zero. Can. I'll just give you a zero. It's a pass-fail. You can, you can take it twice, but I'll give you a zero. But if you take it the first time and you pass it, you don't need to take it again, right? Yeah. But if you fail it the first time, you might as well just forget it because it, it's over. Here's the other thing. Uh, you can earn extra points in the reading by reading an extra book. Uh, you can earn 2.5% on your total grade by reading a second book and passing, and passing a quiz. You can earn another 2.5% by reading a third book. So listen, it's a great idea to try to get this done early. Take it home, read it. Take the quiz, okay? Here's the deal. When you take this, it's got to be an LTC. Um, I'll let you use your notes. If you keep good notes while you're reading, uh, you can use your notes when you take the quiz. Be careful. I think it's 15-minute time limit. Mm. But if you take good notes and you want to keep your notes with you while you take the quiz, I don't care. Okay? You okay with that? Mm -hmm. So I think it would be, it would be great. Hey, listen, by the way, too, keep your notes. If you take good notes and turn them into me when you're done taking the quiz, even if you fail the quiz, I'll give you some credit for taking good notes and I'll, you know, uh, turn that in and I'll give you some points for taking good notes. So it's not a complete loss, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anyway, when you're done, come ask me for a second or third book and I'll give it to you. Read it. Try to pass the other.